to my audience, I would like to say thank you for being here, and may you stay safe and blessed throughout the eternal. Greetings and welcome to you all, and I do mean all, to this broadcast from my starship. I would like to believe you will be able to hear the entire show. Then you may just know how important this one broadcast is to me. I've been studying and researching all I could find on the Internet for the past decade and soaking it up like a sponge in an effort to share the truth with as many people as possible. By utilizing my YouTube channel, writing the book The Earth Code at Hand, and setting up my website, theearthcode.com, and yes, of course, being given the opportunity to host radio shows on a couple of internet radio stations. Now, what's this most important broadcast all about? After the decade of which I mentioned, I have never come across any such presentation as you are about to hear. I have followed Linda Moulton Howe for a number of years and find her to be a most dedicated and sincere woman in her work and presentations. But I have never known or heard anything as this from her as I did just a few days ago. By no means is it her usually fascinating hunt for the truth and explanations for cattle mutilations or her effort in bringing evidence of ETs as cold, hard facts to bring about disclosure. How long have American government and military insiders been enforcing a cover-up of the big secret about an extraterrestrial presence? The timeline of government knowledge about an extraterrestrial presence goes back to at least 1941. A trusted research colleague that I had known since the early 1980s called me in 1994. And soon after this, my second book, Glimpses of Other Realities, Volume 1, Facts and Eyewitnesses, was first published. And that caller was Ray Boucher. He's a theologian, doctorate in theology. He is a devout Christian and a pastor who was also a computer graphics illustrator at the University of Nebraska and longtime investigator of the UFO phenomenon, including the baffling events at RAF Bentwaters Woodbridge in England, December 26 to 28, 1980. Ray told me on the phone that he had been contacted by two men who showed identification, clear, straight, from the National Security Agency, NSA, Fort Meade, Maryland, and the Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, in Washington, D.C. The two agents wanted to discuss Ray Boucher's research about eschatology, a branch of theology that is concerned with the ultimate or last things, such as death, judgment, heaven, and hell, or the end of this world as we know it. During their conversation, Ray referenced my new book, Glimpses of Other Realities, and the two men asked from the government if they could read Glimpses of Other Realities, Volume 1. So Ray was calling me to explain the situation and to ask if I had any objections to his giving the intelligence agents my book. And I told him, not only give them the book, ask them if they will write in the margins whatever comments they have about what is correct and incorrect, and that would be a safe way to communicate to me uh, and for me to learn something, and then I'll send you, Ray, a new copy to replace the one you give them, and I was serious. In June 1994, Ray Boucher called again and said I would be getting a package in the mail. He said the contents would be a floppy disk and a sealed envelope handed to him by the two agents. Ray said the men did not want to write in the book, but were replying on the computer disk with comments about the content in my Glimpses of Other Realities, Volume 1. The following are three pages printed from the two agents that I call the writers. Dear Miss Howe, Date, June 21st, 1994, 11.27 a.m. is when I received it. Your book is an excellent, thought-provoking work. Overall, many salient points are covered quite well. Following are some random notes for your consideration. 
Study Bohm, David Bohm, Wholeness in the Implicate Order, much insight into the mechanics of the NHE is non-human entities can be gained from study of his ideas. He is on target with his concepts, and our program is attempting, unfortunately, to exploit them. Perhaps a better description might be that the mechanics of the NHE's ability to interact with our physical reality is what Bohm's work details. And the contact with the NHEs has occurred and will continue to occur regardless of our understanding of the mechanism of the contact. Our misguided program directors cling to the false belief that we can control or manipulate the NHEs when in actuality the reverse is occurring. We are the ones being manipulated and deceived. Cellular changes in plants from within genuine crop circle formations are due to the same sort of energy release exposure as that used in the so-called negative healing experimentation. Once again, forces being utilized by NHEs to interact with us in a bizarre, confusing manner designed to divert us and draw our attention from the true purpose of their actions, manipulation and deception. The reference of wholeness in the implicate order was a brilliant book by quantum physicist David Bohm, PhD, who lived from 1917 to 1992. Bohm's doctoral advisor at the University of California, Berkeley, was physicist Robert Oppenheimer, who became director of the Manhattan Project in 1943 to develop the atomic bomb in Los Alamos, New Mexico. The writers continue. The penultimate diversion in this whole area is the mutilation of thousands of animals. The NHEs, with the ability to work unseen, read invisibly. Invisibility is a major technology of the non-humans. And to create incisions and excise tissue in manners which seem humanly impossible because they are. And to either remain totally undetected or to create the illusion of extraterrestrial beings. Let me underscore that. To create the illusion of extraterrestrial beings. The apparent UFO phantom helicopter sightings and concomitant occupant sightings often associated with the events. They all provide an extremely effective smoke screen. People are now busy chasing secret government projects, satanic cults, and UFOs, while the actual perpetrating agents go unsuspected. Regarding the phantom helicopters, while many are direct NHE productions in Perrin, craft is not an appropriate term, as they do not need to travel via a propulsive device. Many are related to our program, especially regarding running checks and surveillance on mutilation sites, meaning the black helicopters, and the so-called abduction victims. The comment left on your telephone answering machine, referenced on page 194, may very well have been made by someone within the government hierarchy who has been convincingly fed the false ET scenario propagated as disinformation by those who are in charge of the NHE projects. Many variations of this exist, and all who are privy to a particular variation are convinced they have the answer. With our society as it is now, the core truth of the situation is such that the public really could not handle it. The writer's reference to page 194 of my book, Glimpses of Other Realities, Volume 1, is about an anonymous phone answering machine message on October 18, 1991, 
after I had done a radio interview about government cover-ups of worldwide animal mutilations and the related UFO phenomenon on Coast to Coast AM with host Art Bell. Here is a transcript of the recorded message, and this was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where I lived and worked at the time. So, and the man's voice is low. Bob the Lazar, Area 51, mentioned that the aliens were hundreds of years ahead in technology. Actually, it would be more like thousands of years. The ships don't have windows as we know windows to be. The craft are smooth and metallic colored. The aliens have no intention of hurting anyone. That's a puzzling sentence in here. There will be increased sightings, very, very increased sightings in the future. The blood from the animals that you were talking about is not being used to make things compatible with people as it is being developed for, shall we say, to save the animals against radiation poisoning. Another peculiar sentence. The government does not have ships in working order but does have the remains of some. There was a survivor alien, but I don't know if that person is still living. The truth of the matter is that if the reason for their visiting the planet were revealed, the public could not handle it. It's a constant refrain. Back to the writers, DIA and SA. The ultimate diversionary tactic to this point and diversions will begin to increase in frequency, degree of strangeness, and in a more overt fashion, visible to greater numbers of observers. This is the UFO abduction scenario, which they are saying is deceptive. The concept of these events, real though they are, being the result of extraterrestrial beings is a masterful piece of disinformation to divert attention away from the real source of the non-human entities. Our information as to the true nature of these events does not negate the possibility of extraterrestrial life, but the causal source of the UFO and UFO abduction phenomena is not extraterrestrial. The so-called Roswell crash of 1947 did indeed occur, and debris of a non-earthly type was found, as were non-human bodies. Although in our position we cannot speak with authority, we believe that there is a basis of truth for Bob Lazar's story of government-held craft. However, the origin is not extraterrestrial. Please refer to the works of the late Dr. Kurt Cock, works by C. Fred Dickison, Merrill Unger, Tal Brook, and Dr. Neil Anderson as good contemporary authorities and for more historical background, consult Reginald Thompson's The Devils and Evil Spirits of Babylonia, Edward Langton's Essentials of Demonology, Deacon and Walker's 1601 work, dialogical discourses of spirits and devils declaring their proper essence and Emil Schneidwey's angels and demons according to Lactantis. There are many other good references. We are sure our mutual friend could suggest others as well, meaning Ray and his doctorate of theology. The NHEs being dealt with in our psi weapons development the NHEs being dealt with in our psi, mind, mental, psi weapons development, and who are apparently allowing themselves to be used for a time, are neither benevolent nor neutral. It was our feeling that very few could understand or accept this. That is the reason we approached our mutual friend, Ray Boucher. We have become aware of him through his work on the British incident, R.F. Bentwaters. Ray did some of the best 
uh, investigation with Senator James Exxon of Nebraska at the time. When his probings began to bother a number of high-level people within our program, his theological training, his acceptance of Orthodox Christian thought, and his obvious abilities as an astute researcher seemed to indicate to us that we might effectively communicate our concerns through him and still maintain our positions, which would enable us to accurately monitor the ongoing work. He has made some blunt statements, which run counter to the positions of his peers and has been roundly criticized by many for his position, but we desperately hope that at least some are listening. Your comments and thoughts, referring to me, concerning ancient civilizations and their contacts with the NHEs, need to be considered in light of the bigger picture of the deception of mankind as a whole. If this grand deception is taking the course it seems to be, then it makes complete sense to analyze the false gods of ancient civilizations in light of the current level of deception. It is only logical that given their non-human, other dimensional nature, the NHEs would be able to foresee the need to establish a foundational base the facts of which could be slightly twisted or distorted by the fog of antiquity and forgotten cultural distinctives to seemingly establish themselves as the bringers of all good things to humanity. Explore Jacques Vallée's passport to Magonia again for more close parallels between the fairy manifestation of the NHEs and current events and look very closely at Messengers of Deception by Dr. Vallée, who was so close to the truth of the situation, with the exception that the ultimate manipulators are not human. You have created a remarkable work which helps to begin to point to the final truth behind the phenomena. Our mutual friend could be most helpful to you in explaining details of the deception. We, on our part, will be happy to answer specific questions you may wish to put to us. You must understand, however, that some things simply cannot be discussed. Please transmit your questions and or concerns via our friend. We believe you can understand our need for discretion and the wisdom of limiting the number of direct contacts we make. We applaud your efforts, and we look forward to your next volume. You are a very bright and obviously courageous woman who seems to remember the maxim, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, with our sincerest best wishes. The writer's insistence that the non-human entities are not extraterrestrials might be understood if the NHEs are past, present, future time travelers, or beings from other dimensions or even parallel universes. Those categories might not be considered by government insiders to be biology from another solar system. Jacques Vallée, Ph.D., is an astrophysicist and computer scientist who began researching and writing about the UFO phenomenon in the 1960s. He postulated that the intelligences involved have influenced and manipulated human affairs for centuries, often with deception. In this 1988 book, Dimensions, Dr. Vallée wrote, Quote, we are not dealing with successive waves of visitations from space. We are dealing with a control system. I cannot tell whether this control is artificial in nature, under the power of some superhuman will. It may be entirely determined by laws that have not yet been discovered. After sending the writer some questions, Ray Boucher, on August 16, 1994, two months after that first floppy disk, I received a second. Dear Miss Howe, first, don't get bogged down in either Bohm, Talbot, or Penrose 
and Hammeroth's work. Quantum mechanics and quantum theory are very interesting, but definitely side issues in this whole problem. This is definitely not the key to the enigma, intriguing as it may be. At best, these men are describing the possible mechanics that the NHEs could use to conduct their operations. It is a gross simplification of the matter. However, it is much like trying to explain life and consciousness by saying that the heart is a pump and the brain operates electrically by opening and closing switches. In a purely mechanical sense, this explanation may hit close to the mark, but it doesn't explain the mystery of man's sentient nature. And it certainly does not allow us to create life in the same manner as a mechanic builds a car. There is a personal transcendent power behind all of creation, which is also eminent. That is God. God also possesses the attribute of creating existence, stemming from and dependent on nothing but himself. He is the uncreated source of all that is. He created everything that exists and sustains it. As creator, he is transcendent, a part different from his creation. As sustainer, he is imminent. He is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. He is sovereign over the entire creation. Not a single subatomic particle moves through space without God's express will and guiding hand behind it. Let us use this background to ease into your questions. The NHE's ability to control human minds to monitor them, and to take out minds, as you put it, a process more accurately termed as possession, is related entirely to the fact that the NHEs exist at a different level of reality. They are spiritual beings. We may as well be blunt and call a spade a spade, so to speak beyond any reasonable doubt. The NHEs being dealt with are demonic forces. I can still remember the shock I felt upon receiving the second floppy disk with these words. The NHEs are fallen angels in the classical orthodox sense of the, ter of the term. The Bible makes it quite clear that God created a race of spiritual beings greater than man, generally termed angels, meaning in the original Hebrew messenger. When one of the chief angels, Lucifer, decided to try to usurp his creator's place in the universe, God cast him and a third of the total angelic population who had also rebelled from heaven and gave Lucifer, now referred to as Satan, the accuser in Hebrew, dominion over the earth. Satan is referred to as the prince of the powers of the air, the god of this world, the god of this age. However, Satan and his demonic hosts as created beings may only exercise the amount of influence on mankind which God allows. After all, he is still God and ultimately in control. The mechanism for the NHEs to affect people's minds rests on the fact that these are non-material, superhuman spiritual beings who can manipulate us in ways we don't and possibly never will fully understand on a scientific basis. Our mutual friend is much better equipped to address these theological issues than we are. Our understanding of these forces has been greatly sharpened through discussions of these matters with our mutual friend, Ray. MK Ultra was an effort to establish the ability of mind control techniques designed for use against hostile groups, domestic and foreign, as needed. MK Ultra was one of many mind control projects 
that helped to spawn the current research that has now reached frightening levels of involvement with demonic forces. Methods being used range from seemingly benign meditation and biofeedback, like experiments, through methods including ritual, magic, human sacrifice. How many of you know that Jack Parsons, the first director of the Jet Propulsion Lab, was going into a magical rituals? And that the one that may have set off some series of events is when he tried to contact Aleister Crowley's great alien by doing the Whore of Babylon magic ritual, which is written about in great detail in an autobiography of Jack Parsons, who was a friend of Ron Hubbard's, who founded Scientology, and wrote the book that became the TV series Battlestar Galactica. There's kind of a convergence now of a lot of threads. One important fact to remember is the very, all caps, dangerous, and vulnerable condition in which one exists when one alters one's consciousness, either through chemical means, Eastern mind emptying meditation, so called brainwave synchronization devices, that would be Robert Monroe's work, hypnosis, and so forth. Altered states of consciousness achieved through various means allow a perfect window for these forces to enter into the human psyche, or more accurately, the human soul. Once you relinquish control of your mind to what you believe is the great cosmic nothingness or a neutral cosmic force, you may be very surprised to learn who or what has really come to call. The person and power of Jesus Christ it's hard to remember this is the National Security Agency and Defense Intelligence Agency men sending this floppy disk to me. The person in power of Jesus Christ is the only successful counter offense to NHE mind control possession. Jesus was God incarnate. And in rising from the dead and ascending to heaven, he conquered the power of death and of Satan. Remember that part of the Bible? He who believeth in him who sent me shall have everlasting life, which always to me has had the corollary sentence. He who does not believe in him who sent me shall not have eternal life. Satan is allowed to exert his influence on mankind within boundaries which God has established. Think of the yin and the yang symbol. However, the only effective countermeasure to the assault of the NHEs is Jesus Christ. Again, our mutual friend is better able to explore these areas with you. His prior involvement in occultic studies has made him aware through personal experience of how crucial protection from these entities really is. We can tell you that there is no technological defense against them and that much of what we seem to have developed technologically is nothing more than a mask, if you will, for demonic forces to operate on cue. Another extremely troubling, peculiar sentence for demonic forces to operate on cue. The work that we have done to create equipment to function in the manners described to our mutual friend is, we now believe, relatively worthless from a purely technological basis. Bohm's work is theoretically possible, but the practical applications that we have achieved are far beyond anything that should be possible based upon our current level of research. To put it plainly, we have created machinery based to the best of our ability on Bohm's theoretical work, but we don't believe that it functions apart from direct involvement of the NHEs. 
They are the real driving force behind the actions and effects observed in passing. We are aware of nearly a dozen classic exorcisms performed by members of the chaplaincy on research team workers at various military testing locations. This naturally affords the powers that be with a double cover under which to hide these events, the sanctity of the confessional, so to speak, and the restrictions of military security regulations. Unfortunately, several suicides among those involved in the project have also occurred directly related to the individual's involvement with attempting to harness these NHEs, read demonic forces. As to a secret war against these NHEs, if anyone is waging it, we are. The prevailing attitude seems to be one of desire for increased cooperation exploitation of these forces. This will lead only to chaos and destruction. The possibilities are truly disturbing. We must say, however, that we are certainly not privy to all facets of this research. We believe that the information being provided to some concerning alien as an extraterrestrial intervention is true in an apparent sense. However, it is our contention and we believe our exposure to the type of research we are conducting is adequate confirmation that the appearance of alien intervention has been created by the NHEs to confuse the issue and mask their true nature. Again, our mutual friends spoke quite eloquently to that issue at the April conference in Lincoln, as evidenced on the tape of his presentation. As to a secret war, as far as we know, the answer is no. I asked them that I had been told by several military people that they were involved in a secret war against extraterrestrials. This very idea, however, begs your question in number five, which was, this is me, how can the U.S. government, or any governments for that matter, hope to control, exploit, manipulate beings that are spiritual in nature and have much greater power than human man? The answer is they cannot. And the deception lies in the fact that the NHEs promise benign cooperation, unlimited power for good, and the best interests of humanity on the one hand, while on the other hand, they destroy mentally, spiritually, and often physically those with whom they are working. They are neither benign or neutral. They are evil. We are unable to speak to Teller's motivations. I ask about what I had heard from a physicist that Edward Teller was working like a madman underground during the Reagan administration because they thought that there was going to be an invasion and that Teller and Area 51 and the whole enchilada in the Reagan administration were working 18, 20 hours a day trying to get a technology from something or someone to counteract what they thought was, had the potential to destroy. We are unable to speak to Teller's motivations, but again, if he is motivated by a sense of fear of alien invasion, in our opinion, he is a victim of disinformation concerning the true nature of the NHEs. Seven, that would be schizophrenic government. One hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. Again, this is not an idea of need to know for us, but our opinions would be that these two projects are unrelated to the NHE phenomena so far as we know. Eight, not all moving lights are hard physical objects. And in a sense, your contact is right in stating that the NHEs have come into this dimension from another. The concept of tears or gateways in the time-space continuum is something that has been explored in our areas of research and is essentially the point of ritual magic. The ritual is performed to open a gateway. 
The ritual is performed to open a gateway for a being, parent, demon, to enter and materialize from another dimension. That's what Alistair Crowley was working on when Lamb, the strange head being, came through. It is our opinion that the nuclear testing of the 1940s and onward had little or nothing to do with the ability of the NHEs to traverse dimensions. After all, they are extra-dimensional supernatural beings who already possess these abilities and have been invading our dimensions, so to speak, since time immemorial. As to Oppenheimer's alleged abduction, which I had been told in great detail occurred, that he was abducted from the Manhattan Project. We are unable to speak to that. Oppenheimer held somewhat of an occultic, mystic outlook on many things and may well have had no knowing or unknowing contact with NHEs. However, this is pure speculation based on a complete lack of knowledge of any such situation. The NHEs are little concerned with mankind except in the sense that they can deceive them, manipulate them, and prevent belief in their conqueror, Jesus Christ. The motive for the NHEs to come here is exactly as outlined above. They are here to deceive mankind in whatever manner possible so that man may be prevented from seeing Jesus Christ for whom he really is the incarnate Son of God, who came to redeem fallen mankind from sin by his death on the cross. Again, our mutual friend can more succinctly explain the theological and philosophical implications of this. Homo sapien sapien, the current model of standing up primates, was created by an advanced intelligence but that intelligence was God, not another race of created beings. At this point, reading this, and I'm saying to you, I felt this became a political document to me, a political document through Ray, that the hall of mirrors with a quicksand floor starts going so deeply complicated and schizophrenic in the writers. And in the, in the interest of time, there's a lot more, but I want to show you. They thought I apparently had enough of some kind of credible influence that if I would take all of their floppy disks and start going on coast to coast and earth files and all, that's, that is my reaction. However, however... The Hall of Mirrors with a quicksand floor is deeper and more complicated and more impossible to understand as I am here on May 21st, 2017, than it has been ever before. It's so complicated. I want to show you, it took me hours of work in the University of Pennsylvania. I took their list of books and I went to the librarian at the University of Pennsylvania, which is a major world library, and I said, can you find the devils and evil spirits of Babylonia? And eventually, I, there was no hard physical book. They came in on printed uh, from someplace like Oxford. And this is one of the books that they referenced. Here is some of the cuneiform that relates to this p period of time and to that book. And here, I'd never seen anything like it before. And they are identified as Babylonian demons sculpted as humanoid reptiles. And ladies and gentlemen, I am very serious. I think in looking at this, that you are looking at the real heads in that famous Aramaic from the Dead Sea Scroll, when Enoch falls to the ground because there are two figures in front of him, and he asks, who are you? And the one on the right 
is described as being a viper, has the visage of a viper wearing a many-colored cloak. And the viper says, I am prince of darkness, Belial, and the king of evil. One that's not named physically, but says, and I am Michael, prince of light and king of peace. And then one of them asks Enoch on the ground in this very famous Dead Sea Scroll, which of us do you choose to rule you? I think that the writers were trying to have me see we get a lot of illustrations through the web and all sorts of things having to do with the standing up alligators, the viper of a snake in humanoid form. That's what those are described as. Here is a Babylonian bronze figure called the powers of evil that has vertical pupils. These Ubaid figurines from Mesopotamia some 7,000 years ago, have large slanted eyes on reptilian heads that rise to a high peak. The dots on the shoulders are thought to depict scales of humanoid reptiles. Another colleague sent me an excerpt from a book by William Irwin Thompson entitled Evil and World Order, copyright 1976. Thompson wrote, quote, We humans are like flies crawling across the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. We cannot see what angels and gods lie underneath the threshold of our perceptions. We do not live in reality. We live in our paradigms, our habituated perceptions, our illusions. The illusions we share through culture we call reality but the true historical reality of our condition is invisible to us. The August 16, 1994 floppy disk was the last physical communication I had from the writers, but I kept sending them questions and excerpts from my evolving Glimpses Volume 2. I was working on Volume 2, High Strangeness, hoping the writers would reply. Finally, in April 2001, Ray Boucher received a message from the writers for me. Quote, It is too dangerous for Linda and us to have any further contact. Close quote. It's like being in the presence of one of those mirror balls that used to spin around in discos. Depending upon which facet of any mirror you're looking at at any moment, it seems to have physical reality. But when you stand back, it's a thousand million lights that are reflecting against the walls and the ceiling and the floor. And you can't get a grasp of what the true nature of that mirrored ball is. And that is exactly where I feel that I am today in trying to understand animal mutilations, human abductions, crop circles, why there is that repeating theme in the government. People could not handle the truth. But every fiber of my being feels deeply If we are not told the truth about the presence of demons or other dimensional penetrations as well as angels and the avatars of history, that in itself, that policy leaves us vulnerable. That to me has always been so clear. It is why I have worked so hard for so long. What is happening to humans, my fellow beings, on this planet, whether we're all hybrids now or not. What is happening is a deliberate effort to concoct this planet, 
But the concoction is not for us. The concoction is for some kind of intelligence or intelligences that, as Jacques Vallée and John Keel and Fort said, is a control system that has had humanity and evolving primates in its grasp for at least two million years. Was this presentation helpful to you at all? You think so? Uh, you have no idea how hard it is to think, am I making a mistake? Am I doing something that will be wrong by contaminating people's minds with how difficult and schizophrenic and the idea of non-human entities from another dimension that could be truly what Jack Parsons and Ron Hubbard and Aleister Crowley were trying apparently to conjure so that they, what? That they could talk, that they could interact? And I guess I want to know, do you think that general audiences beyond contact, which is a special magical crossroads, do you think this material should go further publicly? You really do. Well, you know, I guess the part that's missing, and I'm going to just end with this, is even if everything that the writer sent me had some facet of truth on that mirror ball, I want to leave you with my own, I'm 75 years revolution around this sun. And in those 75 years... I have come to a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like I'm standing on a different ground. And this is why I want you to hear this and take it with you. Somehow in the last year, I don't know where it's come from because it hasn't been talking with people and it hasn't come from books or anything. But it was like something was filling me up with you have to remember what happened to you in the mountains of Idaho that I wrote in one of the prologues of my book, where the entire surface of being in the mountains, everything went to pulsing light. And that it first startled me, and I tried to run to make the world go back to normal. But when I ran and stopped, everything was pulsing light, white with orchid f flecks. And then it felt like warm jello seemed to pick up my hands. I didn't do this. Something picked up my hands and brought them up in front of me and this thought voice, a telepathic voice, you are one with the light, the light is one with you and you are in the hands of God forever. But I give that to you. I am serious. Ground yourself. I mean, you can do it. You can ground yourself where you get up and the sun hits you, and that's exactly, I am one with the light. The light is one with me, and I'm in the hands of God. And I'm telling you, it's done something where no matter what I feel that I'm up against, and there are a lot of people who would like me probably evaporated, that the part that's missing from the earth now is that the religions feel so artificial and concocted, and that the relationship between human beings who do have souls, and, and I call it the Porta Vida or the divine field, the divine field to me has no entropy, has no time. It is responsible for all the matter worlds. And if you can find that place to link directly from your soul to the divine field through light, whatever happens in the cycle of life and death, that I believe is a secure and safe link no matter what. What else is out there? The Gnostics would say this universe was built to
to take the Luciferian forces that, ha that had no souls or were stripped of souls to be put in a universe and that other life that would have souls would ha have the only e-tickets out sort of a punishment to these others. That's Gnosticism. Maybe in all of these ancient texts there is a variation of truth and maybe the writers have a piece. But what I just told you about linking to the divine field through photon light, try it. It would make me feel wonderful if there was a group of people who would really start doing this no matter what is going to come in the skies, in the earth, in the solar system, or beyond. Thank you so much.